In this lesson, I'm going to start out by introducing you to the basics of balancing chemical equations. And the way that I'm going to do this is simply by using a linear system of equations. Okay, And so most of the time when you see balancing equations in chemistry, it's just a simple uh, method of guess and check. Or sometimes you may see a teacher write out on one side the amount of oxygens, carbons, and hydrogens on one side and oxygen, carbons, and hydrogens on another side. But what I want to share with you tonight is just a very basic way to do this that works really, really well. And it's just using math, the system of, of equations. So I'm just going to go ahead now. I'm going to write out a simple equation here. I'm going to write out C3H8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add oxygen to it. Okay, this is a combustion, typical combustion reaction. We're just adding oxygen. And we have our reactants here. And we have our products here. And our products, when we have combustion, are always going to be H2O and CO2, our famous greenhouse gas here, right? Um, that everyone's talking about. Water vapor, by the way, is a, is a greenhouse gas. That's, that's another topic here. Okay, so typically, what would we do to balance an equation like this? Um, well, typically, you know, sometimes people will just begin, you know, there's certain rules. You go for certain elements first, uh, you know, and you start just plugging in numbers to find out. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something a little bit different. And I'm going to just uh, go ahead, I'm going to write uh, some coefficients here in front of these, okay? And I'm going to use um, the end of the alphabet, okay? I'm going to use um, uh, W, X, Y, and Z, okay? These are just coefficients, okay? And so these are just going to represent the numbers that are in front of each of these compounds or diatomic molecules that we may have here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write down here, I'm going to write um, different elements, okay? So I'm going to start here, I'm just going to write carbon, okay? I'm going to write hydrogen, and I'm going to write oxygen, okay? And what I'm going to do here is that each time you have an element here in the unbalanced equation, uh, let's take carbon for example, um, in this particular uh, part here, in this propane, uh, carbon appears three times. So I'm going to write 3W here, okay, because there's three carbons, okay. If you go over on this side, every time we have this yields equation, this yield sign, I'm just going to write equals here. And uh, right here, this is my letter Z, right? And how many carbons do I have there? I just have one Z. There you go. Okay, so uh, I have, and for carbons, I have three W and I have one Z. Okay, let's go to hydrogens now. Hydrogens, I have eight W. And over here, uh, I have, I'm gonna write my equal sign. And I have two hydrogens here with the Y equals two Y. All right, with my oxygens, let's take a look here. Under X, I have two of them, so I'm going to say 2X equals, and now on this side, I have a couple more of these. So under the Y, I have one of the Ys here, one Y. And on the Z, okay, I have two oxygens, right? I have O2, so I'm just going to put plus 2Z. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. The way that we're going to go about solving this is we have a system of equations. We have a system of equations with four different variables, right? So you might ask yourself, how can I solve this when I have four variables here, okay? And I have three equations. Well, the way that you do this is you take the equation that has the highest coefficient here, or the letter that has the highest coefficient. In this case, it's W. I'm going to just make W equal 1, okay? So you're going to say let W equal 1, okay? And when you do that, you're going to get some interesting things here. If you go to this hydrogen equation and we let W equal 1, okay, I'm going to get 
times 1 equals 2 times y. Okay, so y is going to be 4. Okay, and so once you start solving these, you're going to see that these are like dominoes falling down. This was, this was the hydrogen equation here. Uh, what about if I went to the carbon equation here? And I say 3w, and we just let w equal 1. Remember that was the highest coefficient, equals 1z. So we know z equals 3. Okay, so notice these are just coming down now like dominoes, pretty easy. So 2x is what we're looking for. That's the only, only one we don't have. 2x equals 1y, which we know is 1 times 4, plus 2z, which is 2 times 3. Okay, I'm going to extend the page down here a little bit. That was oxygen. So I know that 2x is going to equal 4 plus 6 is just going to be 10. And so x is just going to be 5. Okay, so remember, if I go back up here, I wrote up my, my variables in the front here of the equation. We had w, x, y, z. And we said w is going to be 1. We just solved, we said x was 5, we said y was 4, and we said z was 3. And that's it. You balance the equation mathematically, it works perfect. Um, in some situations, like this situation, this was a pretty, pretty easy equation to balance. You may have just wanted to look at it and balance it. But in really long equations where you might have multiple, you know, three, three different compounds on each side and it gets complex you know this is a real uh, time-tested way to solve uh, and to balance your equations and we can just check this if you're if you're skeptical of this we can check it now so let's go ahead and look on this side on the um, on the reactants here we'll just go ahead and test it just to make sure and the products okay let's just make sure that we did this right so let's look at carbons here, let's look at hydrogens here, let's look at oxygens here, carbons here, hydrogens here, oxygens here. And if we did it right, we should have conservation of mass, right? Mass of the carbons on this side should be the same on this side. So let's look, how many carbons do I have over here? If W is one, there's three on this side. And over here, there's three carbons on this side. If I look over here on the hydrogens, I have one times eight, I have eight. I look over here, I have 4 times 2, that's 8. If I look over here, I have 5 times 2, that's 10. If I look over here, I have 4 here, plus 3 times 2, which is 6. So 4 plus 6 is 10 there. And so it works just fine. Uh, I also just, I think this is important because I think a lot of times we... Uh, when people do chemistry, they shy away from the math and the, and the simple realization that this is nothing more than just algebra. This is a system of equations and unknowns, and it's, it's really not that complicated. Um, and it, I, I think this is a, a much more methodical way to solve these uh, than just to simply plug in numbers and guess and just constantly go back and forth and back and forth. You could be spending sometimes up to 20 minutes trying to balance a, a more complicated equation. I've seen that before. Or this might take you, you know, five to 10 minutes, uh, but you can get the answer every time. So just another way to look at balancing equations using a system of linear equations.